Hi, I'm Em Angel, and today I'm going to be reviewing Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, a 2017 follow up to the Jumanji original 1995 movie that meant a lot to me back in the day. This new iteration is more of a comedy than the original was, which was more like a comedic drama. So, just to get a little personal, I grew up in a movie household, and people who grew up in movie households know that there are a few movies that are always on repeat when you're growing up. In our home, the tapes that were always on repeat were Matilda, Hocus Pocus, and Jumanji. So I know that movie almost by heart. It is etched into my brain. So when I heard that they were doing a new one, I didn't really know what to feel. I thought, oh, are they doing a remake? Because Jumanji still kind of fares well, I think. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I'm pretty sure it fares pretty well. But then again, they rebooted Spider-Man and everybody was still not over Tobey Maguire, so they'll do what they want, Hollywood. But no, apparently this is the continuation to our Jumanji story. Same universe, which is kind of confusing when you see the movie, but apparently it is. Overall impressions, I had a great time. I actually laughed a lot and I did not expect to. In the review for the movie Game Night, I mentioned how I'm not one to laugh easily and the type of audience that would love a movie like Game Night, well, there's so many movies that are made for them. I don't know if there are many people who have the same comedic sensibility as I do, but for some reason, this Jumanji made me laugh and in particular, it was Jack Black's character. Before I get into the specific performances, let me review broader things. Do you have to watch the original Jumanji to watch this one? I don't think so. It's hard for me to say because the original is so much a part of me that I can't even imagine not knowing it, but I don't think you really need to watch the original to enjoy this one. It kind of stands on its own. There is a reference in this one to the previous Jumanji, a very subtle reference to the parish boy, but that's all you get. This movie takes a whole new approach to Jumanji. First of all, pff, board game, what? It becomes a video game, which I thought was hilarious and weird and already the comedy starts there. I could just imagine the overlords of Jumanji somewhere in the ether going, <laughs> We're back. Our board game is going to suck lives and trap children. Ah, <laughs> new kid. We are now in your bedroom. And what? Oh no. Did he just put us on the shelf? Oh, these new kids, they don't play board games anymore. How are we going to do this? Oh, I know. Developers, get together. We need to create a video game, basically. Same concept, same sucking the lives out of children, but it has to be a video game Jumanji so that the child can be curious enough to play. And apparently, you know, when you're in Jumanji, a day is like a year in the real world. So they probably took a mortal day and the developers of Jumanji decided to develop a 90s video game edition of the game. I wonder now though if this was actually based on a video game that was released in the 90s when the movie was released. If you know and if you actually played the Nintendo version of Jumanji or Atari, whatever. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section. So bada bing, bada boom, overnight, put they spit out the game, they sound the drums to alert the child that there's been a new release. He gets up, he checks, oh, there's a video game where there wasn't one before. That's not suspicious at all. I guess maybe I didn't see it in the empty box before. Let me pop that into my console and have fun. So anyway, the game comes back in 1996, Kid gets sucked in, boom, 10 years later, we're in, I guess, 2017, but I think it's 2016, because that's 10 years. And we have a new cast of kids who somehow come across this game that didn't bother updating itself for 2016. I mean, you could have become a PlayStation disc. You had the time. Anyway, luckily for them, one of the kids actually knows how to play these ancient type of games. Hook it up, boom, boom, the movie begins. So there's something about the original premise that is a lot more believable and I know it's all fiction, it's all, but something about a voodoo mystified board game makes sense or is believable enough in fiction to just go with it and then have a, a movie that has a more serious tone. In this version, I mean, like I said, it just turns into a video game and you get sucked in. It's a lot more comedic already off the bat. So you know that they better come hard with the comedy because there's no way you can take this seriously. The world of Jumanji is very beautiful, very interesting, very jungly. The CGI in this movie is well done, really. I 
didn't notice it much. There were a few scenes maybe where you're like, okay, green screen, but not that many. You're immersed. You're in this world most of the time. So I think they really did a good job in production. The script is good. Joke density is good. All of the actors did a good job. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is actually really funny because he's always the alpha male, right? He's the brave one. He's smolder face. I forgot. Something smolder. That's him, right? But he also has to play this kid. We all know that he is Spencer and he's the shy one. He's the insecure dweeb dork cutie. So it was weird to see him play those two people at the same time, but fun. Kevin Hart plays Kevin Hart. <laughs> I don't know if he really came across as Fridge, the kid that's inside of him as much, but he's just, he's so funny. I really appreciate this comedian, so I had a good time seeing him just be. I actually wanted more of him. Like I mentioned earlier, the one that made me laugh at every turn was Jack Black as Bethany. Jack Black playing a teenage millennial valley girl is everything. Wow. If you love that concept already of a, as quoting the movie, a middle-aged older man playing a young girl, you're gonna laugh. His execution is brilliant. The way he talks, the mannerisms, the gestures. I don't know, but I want more of that. I don't know if we can spin it off as Bethany gets stuck in Jumanji forever and that becomes a series and it's just Jack Black every day being Bethany. Hilarious. Karen Gillen or Gillen plays Martha. Poor girl, she had a tough job, okay? First of all, she has to be the the bimbo Lara Croft video game character. She can kick butt. I'm not saying that she wasn't fierce. She was. But that we had to have this character dressed in the way she was, and she does mention it. I know you're trying to reference or satire video games and the fact that the female character is always like unrealistic for the setting that she's in. She can fight, she can do all of this, but she has to wear a crop top in the jungle, right? But she did what she could. Although the comedic scenes with her trying to be attractive or seductive, they those didn't land with me because it was really trying too hard. I don't know how to be seductive, so I'm gonna do this and... Come on, you're a human. It was more like an alien trying to be a seductive woman. I don't know, probably some people are gonna laugh at that, but I was not one of those people. Bobby Cannavale plays the villain. Mm, I mean, he's a good villain. He already has this kind of villainish air, the actor, so it fits. He did a good job, but I don't know. I didn't feel like their story really needed him so much. The jungle could have defended itself, but I guess it's a video game it needed a villain. It was just weird to have scenes with the villain and they weren't treated as cutscenes because it kind of felt like this was another character, this was another human stuck inside of the game. I hope I'm not spoiling anything. When you watch, you'll understand what I mean. It just felt like they forgot about the whole concept of the video game. The appearances just weren't treated fluidly enough. So if you like Uncharted and Tomb Raider, you might enjoy this movie. Now, speaking for a certain segment of the world, Nick Jonas, pause for reflection. <sighs> he makes an appearance not long enough. I wanted so much more of him. I know, I know, you must be wondering, I'm Angel, but what about Michael B. Jordan? I know, but Michael B. came after Nick. Nick has been my movie bae for like a year. Nick Jonas does a good job. He plays his character well. He doesn't do too much, nor does he give us too little. You don't realize that he's acting. He's pretty natural. And so yeah, he did a good job and I just wanted more of him. I loved his interactions with Jack Black because we know that Jack Black is Bethany and the way that they interact with each other, it doesn't ever get like creepy and inappropriate like it would if it was in real life. They found a way to not cross the line because movies can easily fall into Creepsville quick and it didn't. It was funny and I like the vibe between these two. They should do more movies together. If you guys actually follow Nick on Instagram, he's pretty funny so he should do more comedies. I like where he's going. Another thing I liked was having NPCs, non-playable characters that have these sentences that they repeat over and over again. I feel like they could have leaned into that whole video game concept a lot more. We could have seen people walking in circles or doing exact same gestures over and over again the way they do in video games. But it's cool, the concept is there, it's explored, it just wasn't explored enough for me. So the last thing I want to talk about is the ending, but that's a spoilery thing, so I'm gonna go into the spoiler segment. So like I said, I really enjoyed this movie. The premise is funny, I had lots of laughs, you might as well. It's definitely a family movie or with friends. It doesn't disrespect the original in any 
any way. It can stand on its own and actually kind of does pay tribute to the original. Okay, if you're going now, like this video, subscribe to Music Game News, turn on your notification bell, and take care. Spoiler time! <laughs> the spoils. Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the ending. We have a huge difference here between Jumanji from 1995 and this one. In the original, when they finish the game and they yell out Jumanji, first of all, when he was on top of that mountain, I was like, say his name, Jumanji, Jumanji, Jumanji. But they had to make it linger. And at that moment, I felt like maybe this movie is made for children and not actually for adults because they're a bit slow in realizing certain things. In the original, when they finish the game, we go back to the first player, to the beginning of the game. It's as if the game stops time until it's over and an alternate reality takes place. I hope I'm not spoiling the original for people who haven't seen it, but I mean, you've had like decades, so. <laughs> My point is that the kids are kids again. They're not older people because they spent, I don't know how many years inside of the game, 10, 20, anyway. They come back to the beginning, they're kids again. They get to live their lives and the other characters that show up in the game later on, they weren't even born yet. So <laughs> they don't know anything about Jumanji, obviously, and it's like, the world continues as if nothing happened. When it comes to sci-fi and consistency and logic in time travel, movies often get it wrong or I personally find doesn't even make sense in the realm of science fiction. This movie is one of those movies. So the Jumanji video game ends and the four kids are just back in detention and they remember the game and everything resumes from 2016 or 17. But wait, how are they going to address the whole Alex in the 90s issue then? Because it actually starts with him. And I would assume that if Alex had spent months in Jumanji and he comes back to the present and he's a kid again, he's gonna see that game and he's going to destroy it. He's going to burn it. It will never end up in the high school where it does, where the four kids play with it. And basically it would erase that reality. That timeline would never exist again. But no, this movie just was like, what? Science fiction? Logic? Pfft. We don't need that. They remember it, they go to the home. What a coincidence, Alex is here with his family and he's never stopped talking like it's 1996. Did he get trapped in the video game? Part of him did, clearly. And of course he remembers the kids. I mean, they're kind of important to his life. It was kind of sweet that he named his baby after Bethany. And kind of weird for Bethany, because she's like, oh, you were this young hottie in the game and now you're like an older man and you named your baby after me. So I guess that crush is over. I also just wanted to mention, I love Colin Hanks. So I was happy to see him in this movie. So yeah, as if that wasn't bad enough that they just completely disrespected the theory of time travel and multi-dimensions and all that and timeline and logic, they had to end with that very corny, unrealistic scene where the four kids that come from different social stratas come together in high school. Now they're hanging out. Like, really, Bethany's going to ditch her friend to hang out with these guys? Really? Just because they had an adventure together? No, no, no. That's not how things would go. If anything, it would be more like in the movie Mean Girls, where the girls kind of just check each other because they've been through a lot together, but we're not friends. We don't have anything in common, really. Why do they have to hang out with each other? Why do they have to be friends now? It just that didn't make sense. And it felt like they wanted to do that just so that they could all be like, hey Spencer, go get your girl. And then he could have a kiss with her. Couldn't he have done that way earlier when they left detention, when they went, whoa, what is that, blah, blah, blah. And they all ran out. He could have stopped her and had a moment with her. And they could have ended it with meeting older Alex. I don't know. The ending was kind of sloppy and careless and felt like the writers gave up. I don't, I'm surprised. I'm just really surprised. I still had a good time, so I just decided to if forget the ending. Oh yes, and one more thing that didn't make any sense to me, and I don't know if anyone can make sense of it. Alex, Nick Jonas. When we meet him and he takes us through like, you know, Indiana Jones's Temple of Doom underground trap house, he knows how to avoid all of the pitfalls, all of the booby traps. He knows, okay, you can die this way, that way, this way. And I counted like at least four or five ways that he could have gotten chomped. Later on at his hut where we see the little, you know, parish shout out. He mentions that he died in a plane and that he has, he's down to one life. Then how did you die 
all of those times enough to know what to avoid in the game. It sounds like you died a million times. Maybe he wasn't actually playing the game or actually dying until the other characters stepped into the game, you know? Like he kept starting over, kept being respawned, I think is the, the term in video game lingo, because he was the only one. So the game hadn't really started yet. But then when all four other characters entered the game, now he started to die and maybe he noticed that, oh, it's taking effect. That means that the other players must be in the game. But he didn't ever mention it or clear it up. He really just acted like he died a million times, but uh, he was only penalized three of those times. It just didn't make any sense to me. Am I missing something? Please let me know in the comment section below if it made sense to you. Okay, I think I said everything. I should have maybe taken notes, but I was enjoying the movie, so I didn't. You're sure to talk. What did you think of Jumanji? Welcome to the jungle. Comment section below, you know what to do. Before you go, like this video, subscribe to Music Game News, and let me know if there are any other movies that you would like me to review, or TV shows, of course. Thanks for watching, I'm M Angel signing off. Cheers.